Hey YouTube, in this episode I'm still putting the finishing touches on the arms. I had thought that I might finish them in this episode, but it seems that everything about this job takes longer than I anticipate. I've decided to show some of the failed attempts as well as the successful ideas in this episode. I don't know how many of you might want to emulate this project, but I've done this in the hope of showing some people just what doesn't work as well as what does. Let's have a look at it. Well, work and a few other things have conspired to keep me out of the shed for almost the last week. But I'm finally back out here. I've got to weld around these plates and this one down here. I'll weld on the insides as well, on top and bottom, and flip him over to the other side. Get him all welded up and then I'm going to use him as a template to line up the other side. That's the plan anyway. So right, let's get to welding. Using 7018 rods, 3.2 millimetres, which is 1 8 of an inch, and I have the amperage set on about 120. And now it's just a matter of turning it over and doing the same thing on the other side. And I'm still using the 7018 rod with the same setting. Now I'll swap over to 6013 rods and I could have weld around all these bushes. Now apart from getting the cross member in, the arm, this arm's finished as far as welding goes anyway. Now I'll leave the amperage set the same, 3.2mm 6013s, that is 1 8 of an inch. I could have run some weld on the inside of these where they poke out, but I've decided that I probably don't need to. And I'm going to call that good enough. Now because this is pretty much finished and there's so much weld spatter on it, I'm just going to give it a quick hit with a grinder to knock that off. Hopefully then it will be pretty much prepared for painting. Alright, I've got the arm that I've finished welding on the bottom. I've got this other arm on the top. I just carried him over here and sat him here. And I'm going to line him up. Use these pins to make sure he stays precisely lined up. Oh, a bit further out than I expected. Not something I didn't do well enough when I put these together. I didn't check that the top and bottom holes lined up. And they're not far out, but they are a little. I think I can live with it. A little bit over an eighth of an inch. Should be enough play to take that up, I hope. The alternative is to fix it, and that doesn't really appeal. It's less than an eighth of an inch, actually. I'm going to run with it and see if we can get away with it. So what I need to do now is to line these up. That's exactly as they are on the bottom. Okay, well, that's that one lined up about as good as I'm going to get him. So I'll go ahead and put some tacks on it. Measuring tricks and just make sure she looks right. Oh, yeah, it looks good. That's 798 to the center of the hole. And same story up on this one. I've used the bushing here to help me get him lined up. I think that will be precise enough. I hope it will be because that's where I'm going to take him. All right, now I've got to figure out how to do this other one. I don't know if she's going to sit as well there. Well, there may be a way. I'll explain what I'm going to do when I can show it. All right, now I can position this bottom one by lining him up on the bushes of the one underneath. Now, it might not have been easier just to measure this. Put two little tacks on it on this side because the other side's pulled away a bit. I'll have to tack him later. And then I'm going to straighten this end up a little bit and tack him. Come back when I've got that done. I've turned him over, got a couple of clamps on here to pull him in on the end that was sitting up. I'll go along now and put some tacks on it. Alright, now before I weld him, I'm going to put him back on the tractor, fit the 
hydraulic ram to him and just make sure that it all lines up correctly before I go ahead and put a lot of weld on him. So I'll go off camera if I got that fitted. Well, that was a bigger production than I'd hoped. I had thought if I lined them up properly together and tacked them there, it'd work. But I am really, really happy that I brought it over here to the tractor itself and tried it on because it didn't work all that well. Not quite sure how, but it was out a bit and I ended up putting the ram in back here to line this end up and then I measured this one up and then I leveled across them using a water level. Just in case there is some people out there that don't know what a water level is, I will do a workroom tip on that in the very near future. So anyway, I got one side of it tacked on. I had to cut off those tacks I had on before. It's a little bit wary of this other side. I think, I think I must have a bit of tack still in under there that needs grinding off. So I'm going to take this other side off and I'll, this one's solidly tacked on so I can use him to line it up. I'll take this one off, make sure it's the tacks I cut before are totally ground down and then I'll be able to tack this side in as well. See, that's why I'm concerned about it. I don't know if you can see that on the video, but I've got a good four mil gap there, so I think it's getting pushed out back here somewhere by a tack that's still on there from when it was in the wrong spot. Or maybe not. No, that's just the geometry of it. Oh, I took that off for nothing, but while I'm here, I will trim these tacks down just the same. Won't do any harm to get rid of them. They're not doing any good. All right, well, this should be fairly easy to get back on there. So make sure I put him on the right way. There's no real pressure on that now. I'd use to get down here where I can see what's happening. Now I've got a bit of play in these holes, but I just want to make sure that the pin doesn't jam up in it. Right, that's got him. I think that should be pretty good. I'll attack that there. Leaves four or five millimetres. There's about three sixteenths of an inch of play side to side. I think that would be appropriate. I don't think I should be jamming it up too tight. And if I do need to reduce the play, I can put some washers in there to do that. I'm just going to tack this other side on now so he won't get knocked and moved now that I got him right. And just before I do, I just eyeball the cross. And yep, they look to be lined up really well. That's a really good tack, that one. He's not going anywhere. I've got the second arm laid out on the welding table, or the half completed welding table. I'm going to finish welding him up now. And apart from putting the cross brace in, that's pretty much all the welding done for the arms. I'm just going to go around this bush at the top here. 3.2mm, 6013 rods, 120 amps, 118 inch rod. Now I've tacked these two bushes for the main hydraulic ram in place, and I'm not sure whether I showed on the other video or not, but I tacked it with the pin through there just to try and make sure they didn't pull out of shape too much. Seems to have worked okay on the other one. They end up being a little bit tight, but that should be expected with the heat that's been applied to them. I'll just go ahead and finish welding them now, and then I've only got to get these front ones in. I don't think I showed this on the other arm quite properly. I sit this down here, level with the underside of this. You'll notice it sits up a little bit. Now, half of that distance, it should sit out half of that distance on each side when it's in place. The trick is to sort of hold him just about there, so we've got that little lip just up on both sides, just there, even, and get a tack on him to hold him there. That's what I'm about to attempt now. All right, let's get him back in place. Okay, that lip's pretty even. 
And there we've got a nice lip there, nice lip on the underside. And that just saves the uh, pivots from rubbing on this side plate. Just lifts them up just half a millimetre, about 30 seconds of an inch, just away from the side plates a little bit. That's all it needs. So I'll finish welding these off camera. The welding on them is the same as you've seen on the other side. The only other thing you, you might just want to do is just put that in and make sure it's square both ways. That looks pretty good to me. I am confident enough that I'm not going to bother with a actual square because it's fairly snug fit in there and I've squared everything else up beforehand. So I'm just going to bite the bullet and weld it. I'm just doing towers now. I'm doing the final wells on them, which is welding these bushes in to take the pin for the hydraulic ram. I've got these positioned so there's about a sixteenth of an inch of play in that. It's about one and a half millimetres, which should be fine. I'm going to weld or tack them in with this pin in place, try and minimise any distortion from pulling, and I'll take the pin out and finish welding them. Got this one and the other one to do, and then the towers are finished. Take the pin out and get them welded up. Got a lot of spatter in there. Unfortunately, nowhere to get the power tool in there, so we're going to neaten them up before painting. We've got a lot of hand work to do. Oh well. Such is life. Might need to be eased a little bit because inevitably it has pulled a bit. I'll see what it's like when it cools down. I may just have to put a die grinder in through the hole just to ease it a little bit until I can get the pin in. Or I might get lucky and when it's cooled down it'll be just fine. There's a quick touch put back on this side. Okay, that's that bit. This bit goes like that. The open end down this way to the quick attack. Ah, exactly back to front on this piece. Don't know what I was thinking. The open end goes back for the ram. Goes like that. And that's how he sits. Put this piece back in now. That's one arm completely put together now. I'll put the other arm together and I can go around and finish making the pins and then I've got to measure up for the hydraulics. This is my second uh, wrist link I'm putting together. I'm going to do him just slightly differently. I'm going to tack this side and I've got oh, maybe a quarter of a millimetre, about a sixty-fourth of an inch. Just sticking out. You can just barely tell and that pulled a little bit because it's not sticking out even anymore. Uh, it's got him. Pretty even stick out on it. Yeah, if I'm lucky, it'll still be there. All the same, all around. Looking excellent. Here, one eight sixty thirteen again for these fillets. Running at about 120 amps. On there, I've got to do the same on this side. Get that stick out exactly right. And at the same time, I need to make sure that I've got them parallel, which you're a long way from. Close to parallel. And that's close to the stick out. That didn't work too well. I'm wishing I didn't put quite so good a tack on that one now because this side's right but the side I tack isn't so I'm going to tack this other side, cut this one, move it and hopefully that will get it into position all right. Let's go off camera for a minute, undo that tack and see if I can line him up. I got that tack cut and I've got him all positioned properly again and I've contrived to put a couple of clamps on there to help hold him while I get him welded a bit better. Now the reason I'm doing it this way is I'm going to fit it up a little bit differently I think. Differently to the plans, differently to the other one and I think it's going to be better. I probably won't put this in the plans even if it works. I will do some pictures of it and put some still shots up so you can see how I've done it differently, if it works. And now this is putting the bushes into the quick attach for the wrist link. Let's turn him around so you can see that's the wrist link there. I'm putting these bushes in here 
and I'm leaving them stick through onto the inside so there's about a half a millimetre of movement in between them. That's probably somewhere between a 64th and a 32nd of an inch, so not very much. So I'm going to tack those on with the pin through. Then I'll knock the pin out. Now, the reason I've left them proud on each piece was to make sure that these sides don't rub together and only the bushes actually rub together. And I think that was a mistake I made on the other one. I didn't really account for that properly. I tried to do it down on the floor. I hate working on the floor. It's that uncomfortable and it's hard to line things up properly. I should have taken the time to think it through and do it on the bench. But never mind, done is done. We make the best of it. So I've left the pin stick up a little bit out of there so I can make sure I keep the weld away from the head of the pin. So I've done the other side. Now that they're tacked I can pull the pin off and weld them. Welding's the same as all the rest of it so I'll just do that off camera. And I hope you can see that in there. I'll just focus. Ah uh, yes. So you can see that little tiny bit of stick out that I've got in there is probably in the order of half a millimetre, maybe a shade more, so somewhere around about 3 64ths of an inch, I'd reckon. Anyway, that's again, like I said, to make sure that the bushes rub against each other and the sides don't touch, which is what I should have done with the other one. In the next episode, I want to finish the arms and I will do it this time, I will get the hydraulics routed with the possible exception of the return line which I still haven't quite figured out what I want to do with. If you'd like to see more of my projects you can go to my channel or browse to my website. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe. Until next time.